Formula One steering wheels, there are so many different buttons and configurations on this that for simple folk like myself, it's very hard to try and wrap your head around what all these different buttons do. But of course, it's the job of the driver to understand how this wheel works and know how to make all those changes whilst racing on the track. Also, today's video is sponsored by Surfshark VPN, but more on them a little bit later. Now, in this example, we're going to be using the Mercedes 2020 wheel. Now, there's been a few changes since then, but basically what you'll find with most teams is that once they've stuck to their wheel design, they'll actually stay with it for quite a long while. And you also have this with Alpine, you have it with McLaren, and also with Mercedes, just minus the DAS system. Now, on this wheel, you have 12 12 buttons on the front with two on the rear with nine rotary switches on the front a quick release on the back of the wheel which is basically how they get it out of the car two paddles on the very back of the wheel which are for your clutch and onto the first topic we're going to talk about the wheel is actually the shifter now many other teams use paddle shifters for your upshift and downshift but with Mercedes they actually use a rocking mechanism that basically means that when you upshift it means the left hand side actually is elevated and when you downshift it means the right hand side is lifted up but like I mentioned in the beginning there's two more buttons on the very back on the top right and the top left now all teams have this in some configuration whether it be a switch or a button or even a paddle shifter but most drivers actually run this with brake balance because you can make those changes going into a corner very easily where you want some more brake balance or less brake balance and all you're going to do is just press the button while you're turning and then you're sorted. Teams also mold the driver's hands in positions to try and make a customized rubberized grip and also to customize the clutch paddles at the very back there but obviously they're then smoothed out so you have no ripple effect and it's more comfortable for the driver and there's a reason why the differential controls are on the hand grips because it's easy enough to go through rather than having to take your hand off and properly make changes. But now let's try and explain all the buttons and rotaries on the front of the wheel. First is the DRS button, meaning drag reduction system. This allows the rear wing to open when the driver is within one second of another when they pass a detection zone. And although the footage from testing is demonstrating this in the wet, this is only allowed in dry conditions. Next are the driver defaults with buttons plus 10 on the left and plus one on the right. These buttons can be used in two scenarios. First being for when the team are needing to fix a sensor on the car, which the driver will need to manually fix. As an example, they can come over the radio and say, Lewis, driver default 12, which they'll then need to press once on the left and then twice on the right. But a second scenario is for adjusting the power unit settings, which I'll come back to a little bit later. This button here labeled with N is to put the car into neutral and can be done in no matter what gear the car is in. The mark button enables the driver to do exactly that by marking something out on track, which they want to have a look at in the data later on. For example, the driver could feel some weird vibration coming out of a corner, so they'll give it a mark so the team can investigate into the telemetry to see what could be causing that. Here we've also got a cancel button, which is to help undo extra buttons accidentally being pushed when doing the driver defaults I mentioned earlier. And at the bottom we have BB minus and on the right we have BB plus. These are to control control the brake balance, which are simply to increase or decrease the amount. Looking on the right hand side, we have the PL button, meaning pit lane speed limiter. This will limit your speed to 60 or 80 kilometers an hour whilst driving down the pit lane towards your garage, and the speed will depend on which track the race is held at. The PC button stands for pit confirm. This is an automatic alert for the garage that the driver is coming into the pit lane. An additional way to contact them is with the talk button, which is for the team radio. Pressing it once to open the radio to talk and pressing it again to mute yourself. Above, we have the RS button, meaning race start. This will set up your car to the correct engine maps to begin the race, but this button can also be changed to being the overtake button, giving you all the car's performance from the engine and the ERS battery. But just before we find out about the rotary switches, let's thank today's sponsor, Surfshark VPN. Don't skip ahead because this includes the F1 testing, which is currently going on right now. Now, obviously to watch F1 testing, most of the time it is behind a paywall, but this method actually means you get to watch it for free. Now, there's many different ways you can actually watch F1 testing right now, which is through F1 TV Pro or with Sky Sports Live. And for the very first time in Australia, one of their broadcasters, KO, is also live streaming the event. But crucially here, they are offering a seven day free trial. So what you can do right now is click the link in the description to download Surfshark VPN and digitally change your location to Australia. Then head over to KO's website and sign up for their free trial. And then you're able to watch the remaining days for the F1 testing in Bahrain. And obviously if you want to continue that package, then you don't need to cancel your membership. Or if you just want to watch it for a couple of days for free, then you can do it that way. But the great thing about Surfshark VPN, is not just limited to the UK or even to Australia, it has servers in over a hundred different countries, meaning you can unlock even more Geobot programs and services in different territories. Plus, if you use my promo code MattAmos at checkout, not only will you get 83% off your plan, you also get three extra months for free. Plus, there is a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you can try all of this out, and if it's not for you, then there is no risk in cancelling. So make sure to click the link in the description below, and thanks very much for Surfshark for sponsoring this video. Up next, let's talk about the rotary switches. The first three which are linked together are the entry, mid, and high-speed switches. These give the driver throughout 
a lap control of the differential, which in loose terms means how much the rear wheels can rotate independently. For example, having less diff will help rotate the car when one wheel is rotating more than the other, or a higher diff can lock both wheel rotations together to give more stability. The BMIG switch means brake migration, which each of these numbers have different maps of brake pressure going towards the front and rear wheels. And on the opposite side, we have the brake balance maps. These select pre-made setups for the brake balance and the buttons we saw earlier are used to finally adjust them. The bottom three rotary switches begin with the strategy mode, which are different power modes to use throughout the race. The middle rotary switch is to look after the menu settings, for example, making changes to the radio volume, brightness, clutch bite point display, and so on. And the last rotary switch is the HPP, which is for the power unit settings. Remember before how we talked about the driver default buttons? Well, the other use for them is for when the team are wanting to make changes to even to the power unit, the energy management, or the MG UK, and will instruct the driver to move the switch to a particular number, for example, HPP3 position 11, and then the driver will turn this to three, then press on the plus 10, and then the plus one. And the last fun fact is that if you want to purchase one of these steering wheels, you can do so right now with F1 Authentics, who are linked in the description below. They've been very kind enough to supply this for the video and let me come here today. So if you want to check them out, they are linked down below. But hopefully now you're all caught up with how a Formula One steering wheel works. If you want to see some more videos of mine, you can do so by clicking over there. And if you're new here, then make sure to click subscribe. But thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time.